Well, as you can see, we've had some rain last night. We've got some water starting to pull up. We've had four and a half inches here in the last several days. So, starting to get a little wet, which is a good thing. It makes up for all that lack of rain we had this summer. So we're going to go inside here, inside the barn, being it's a little cool here right now and everything's still wet out here on the mill, and work on the log turner. So this is the view of the log turner. Of course, it's upside down, as it is before I make any changes. You can see down here on the end, the tension adjustment. I'm going to reverse that to where the tension adjustment comes from behind. I got to get rid of this big gear right here. I need a small gear there. Let's get this thing apart and figure out what we're going to do with it. Essentially using the same kind of winch. This is a little worn winch, 2,000 pound. A uh, little bit worried whether or not it has enough strength. So essentially what, would, what I would do was put a 16 tooth sprocket on there, 48 chain. It'd come out and go to a 10 tooth. That 10 tooth would be mounted on the shaft coming out of the side of the log turner and you would have this 23 tooth inside and it would come across and it would tie into this one on the bottom here that's got a weld to your main drive sprocket and it's 20 tooth. Thus, essentially you're giving yourself more speed this way, right? We're going from bigger to smaller. So the question is, is how much torque or how much strength that you're losing? And if it, 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 are you going to retain enough torque to be able to turn a decent sized log? Or essentially the largest log that you're going to put on there, which is, what, 4,000, 4,500 pounds, something of that sort maybe? So the other part of this is, is I need to pull this log turner out so I miss that uh, drive shaft to the log stop and so here's the three inch plate that I'm going to weld up it's just two pieces of strap that's going to allow me to bring that uh, log turner out and it's got a, an extra hole there where I can adjust this log turner down in the uh, carriage if I need to this will just give you a little closer look at it the inch and three eighths are cutting off the end and the two inch section are taken out right there in the middle that's essentially about 9 sixteenths I'm taking out on either side. The equivalent to about 15 millimeters. I don't think it'll be too much. Hopefully it'll be just, it'll be enough to make these logs turn a little better. Because as it was, this straight flat log turner was letting the logs just run right up to the end of the log turner. Which is not a good function. Okay, so you can see the previous configuration that was on the log turner. I had that large Ramsey motor from a Ramsey winch. You had the small gear uh, sprocket here that went to this larger 72 tooth sprocket. And then on that same shaft inside the log turner, you had a 10 tooth sprocket going to a 42 tooth sprocket. Because I, I had to slow down that uh, motor and get more power. Well, on this one, using the winch, I've got to speed it up. So 
over here on the sprocket I built a new sprocket for the uh, log turner chain and this is going to go on here like so I have to weld it on over here on the inside I've already beveled this sprocket here so I can make a, little, a weld all the way around there so that's what I'm going to do next So I decided for now that I'm going to use a winch to power the log turner. So if you watched the previous videos, you saw me put a sprocket on this log turner like this before. Of course, this one won't, this one will not be welded on; it will be clamped on. This is actually the second time I've taken this apart. Uh, to get these screws out initially, I had to take a propane torch and heat up the casing. All right, so there's the spool. So I'll have to cut this uh, end off so I'll be able to uh, get the sprocket on there. Yep, still have full engagement. You'll look at this and you'll say, man, you're cutting off your whole landing, but not really on this side. The uh, end of this spool actually lands inside of here. So losing this outside ring does not hurt at all. All right, this is an inch and quarter sprocket. It has two set screws in it. Of course, I'll change those out to an extended point set screw. On the other spool, the exact same maker of the winch, uh, I actually had to take a flapper wheel and clean out the inside of the sprocket. This one slips right on easy, so, you know, it'll still work because we'll put those, we'll drill and set, put those set screws into the spool. So you can see I've got the uh, sprocket and the split collar in place. Neither one of them are secured to the Pool quite as yet because I got to see what, where the placement of the sprocket needs to be. But uh, ultimately, I'll drill into the spool where the set screws go so that they anchor into the spool, and then I will well tighten up the screws on either side of the split collar to so it firmly attaches, and then put a small weld in between the split collar and the sprocket.
At first, I thought maybe I had taken too much out, but I don't think so. If you look at it, I think that's going to work out pretty good. Because you're not going to have that chain just hyper tight. You you want that chain to conform to the log when it squishes up against there. So I actually think that's going to work out pretty darn good. Of course, we don't know. Do we get it installed? So you can see where I've gone with it so far. So it's no longer straight. We've got it angled up. So it's going to be about an inch and seven eighths gap in that chain off the bed there in the middle. I moved the adjustment back from the end to behind the sprocket, which should make it things a little bit better. There's one on each side. There's your mounting plate for your winch. There's your drive sprocket coming from the winch. That'll probably be adjusted in a little bit. So that plate on this side, if you look at the 1600s uh, Temper Kings, they actually have a plate running all the way from one side to the other. So I may end up doing that on this to give it ad added support. On the other side, I can add a, an L support going to the bunk. But I'll do that once I get it mounted. So, you can see the difference in the drive gear there. There's your bottom one coming off the three quarter shaft. So, that's a 23 sprocket, 23 2 sprocket. That's a 22 sprocket up here.
looking at the back side that's up against the bunk right here is probably where I'll add a, a support plate say a piece of 3 8 plate Elling off here toward the bunk and a bolt onto the bunk you have a corresponding plate welded to the bunk that should give it added support you know from you know heavy logs and everything being that this is going to be three inches further out the more you can leave can leave her out the more stress you're putting on the frame so we'll go ahead and add some support so there we go i think we'll break the video off right here and the rest of the modifications and installation will be on the next video thank you for watching